guitar nerds, this is Rod Gels, and welcome to Guitar Hall of Fame. This first episode, I had to think about who I wanted to start, who was going to launch this new, new, new thing that I'm establishing here, which guitar player kind of like was the basis for all, so many other players, and what I came to, the conclusion I came to is uh, Riley B. King of Mississippi. Riley B. King is better known as B.B. King, born in 1925. He was also a DJ. He was also a cotton. He was in the cotton industry where he was picking cotton as a kid, as a teenager. He was, um, he was also somebody who uh, manned the cotton gin in the deep and hot and sticky south. Uh, music was his salvation. Music is what got him away from all that. So he went, um, uh, he went north, and he went north, and he he got he discovered in music, both vocally, and guitar wise. He was also a wonderful singer, which not always was the case. Not everybody who's a great guitar player, as we know, can can equally emote as a singer. Um, he had a kind of zeal of a Baptist minister that discovered something that he wanted to share with the world. And uh, with that said, this is B.B. King's story, brief story, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the things that make his his playing, his playing, and I'm, you know, uh, things that I want to share with you. Okay, so he was born um, on September 16th, 1925, in the Deep South, Mississippi. Cotton people, these were cotton people. Um, religion was a part of their thing, and... Uh, singing and, and, and work songs and all that, that certainly had to be a part of the culture. And, and uh, while he was still a teenager, he moved up north, took up the guitar as a teenager, and uh, he, learned how to, he learned how to play it, and he learned how to play it by listening, listening and, and singing and, and, and trying to find those notes that he heard his heroes play. So who was he listening to? Lonnie Johnson. We have um, we have uh, T Bone Walker was a, a very big influence on him. Uh, Blind Lemon Jefferson, which, who was an acoustic blues player, uh, Book of White, who I think he was related to, Elmore James, Charlie Christian, who was a jazz guitar player, who was probably one of the first jazz guitar players, um, and Jump Blues. Jump Blues was a uh, it was the kind of a musical statement that was after swing music and it was very celebratory and it was very dancing dance worthy and that was his louis jordan louis jordan was his was was his uh one of his heroes and he's recorded albums that uh just spotlighted louis jordan's uh influence on him so uh 1949 was the first year that he got in a recording studio People who were backing him were very, very accomplished jazz musicians, um, and and uh, and uh, so it would not be till two years later that he would have his first number one hit, which is a pretty fast ascension, if you ask me. Uh, it was Three O'clock Blues was his first number one hit in 1950, 52, I think it was. So, um, with that said. He was, a, what he did for the, the guitar was this is a solo instrument. He took the expression that he heard and he took from T-Bone Walker. And as I said, he, with the zeal of a Baptist minister that I discovered something that, that I have to share the world because this is, this is, makes me feel good and I know it'll make other people feel good and I know that there was a, that kind of love it was beyond just a musical kind of thing he took that to the people so starting around whenever he had his first number one hit he was on the road he took his band to the road on the road and for 65 years he never stopped playing you know maybe a couple months off here or there but he had countless albums never stopped playing he lived a, a relatively clean life. 
when I say a relatively clean life, a lot of blues people, they live dangerously. So we have Robert Johnson, Robert Johnson, from the time he was discovered to the time that he died, it was like two years. Jimi Hendrix was like, uh, was like four years. Uh, Steve Ray Vaughan was like seven years. Okay. Um, so to be a blues musician, there are people like Sun House that got out of playing blues because he was afraid that he was the next to die because that there's something back in the 30s and 40s that the, the blues was the devil's music. Okay. Certainly B.B. King's music was not the devil's music. But anyway, so with that said, he took this sound and this was a sound that was going to inspire, that would later inspire throughout the 50s, folks like the Rolling Stones, folks like Eric Clapton, folks like Jimi Hendrix, folks like Chicago Blues, Buddy Guy, uh, uh, Otis Rush, all the all the sounds that made up rock and roll in the 60s and 70s and 80s, B.B. King was the basis of that. And it wasn't just one sound that he created. He wasn't ju uh, just about, let's play something slow. Every decade, he would have different things, different sounds that, that he would experiment with. Some of my favorite B.B. King tracks are those tracks uh, that he did on Live and Well, where you have his traditional sound was on the first first half of the album on side one, and you turn the record over, and it was all all the studio, all the studio tracks with with the uh, New York uh, studio scene with Jerry Jamont on bass and and, and Her uh, Herbie Lovell on drums, and it was just a wonderful wonderful R and B kind of blues, redefining what is possible, okay? Not everything was jump blues with with uh, with B.B. King. So with that said, he was that guy that treated the blues like it was a church. I say this, I'm talking spiritually speaking, and um, he reminds us that life has its sorrows, but he also reminds us that there's so much to be celebrated. Now, with that said, I'm going to move on to what makes him different, what makes him unique. Uh, what we can talk about, light and dark. Okay, so typically when we talk about the blues, a lot of times what we say is just play your minor pentatonic. <laughs> So just play your minor pentatonic, okay? So that's that dark minor, minor kind of sound. What B.B. King did was he would take the minor and he would mix it with major. That is kind of his blues box, what is referred to as his blues box. It's not just a minor pentatonic. It's not just a major pentatonic. He's mixture. He's, it is a mixture of, of sound. All right. Some of this I hear. Some of this I hear the influence of Charlie Christian. He didn't. He didn't just play slow blues all the time. As I said, jump blues was a was a very very real thing. So he would do all kinds of things that from a different era that this becomes the common thing that we later on, like the Led Zeppelins and the Jimi Hendrixes, and he shaped the music that was gonna come down the pike years and years and years till this day, okay? So. So what 
I'm going to do next is I'm going to play a little bit with uh, BB, Blues and A, trying to put some of his flavor into it. None of this is, none of this is, uh, it's all freestyle, but it's in his style. That is it for this episode of Guitar Hall of Fame. B.B. King is somebody you should check out. Check out his stuff from the 50s, 60s, 70s. Uh, now, more so than ever, it's easy, easy, easy to, to check out the stuff that, that came from the past because we all have streaming devices and, and with Napster and everything. So anyway, I will see you next time and we'll expose somebody else, some other really great player in Guitar Hall of Fame.